In this tutorial, you will learn how to use a template from the Protection Testing Library, or PTL. If you are not familiar with the basics of automating tests with XRIO, we recommend that you watch the XRIO video tutorial first. This tutorial also contains information on how to access the Protection Testing Library. In this tutorial, we are going to prepare a test plan for an ABB REL670 distance protection relay. We already downloaded the corresponding PTL template from the Omicron customer portal my.omicronenergy.com and opened the Control Center document. The Control Center document already contains the test object, the hardware configuration, and a list of test modules that can be used for testing. First, we configure the test object. The custom block is usually named after the relay which the template has been created for. This block contains several predefined parameters. They represent the settings in the relay and are used for test automation purposes. By default, the custom block consists of four subblocks. The Relay Parameter section is a collection of setting parameters of the modeled relay. The structure corresponds to that of the relay software in most parts. Now our first task is to enter the values of the parameters. We can do this either manually or by using an import filter. For this type of relay, we make use of the XRIO import filter. Select the settings file you want to import. In our example, this file has been created with the relay configuration software based on the settings sheet of this specific relay. Please make sure that you import the correct setting file. Also be aware that if you download parameters from the relay, they may differ from your settings sheet, which may cause testing issues. After the import is finished, a notification will pop up. The table below contains additional information about the parameters imported. We can use this table to quickly check the parameters. Next, we will have a look at the Additional Information subblock. This block contains additional items that are not included in the Relay Parameter section, but are also needed for testing, for example, general information about the relay being tested. Furthermore, this block contains the tolerance values of the different protection functions as defined by the relay manufacturer in the relay manual. No action is needed unless the tolerances need to be changed for any reason. The Rio Plus and Template Controller subblocks are only visible in the advanced view. Rio Plus serves as a link between the custom block and the Rio functions. Template Controller is used to activate or deactivate test modules based on the settings in the Relay Parameter section. In principle, you don't have to adapt any of the settings in these two blocks. But if you want, you can add your own custom parameters. Just keep in mind not to delete any of the existing parameters because they might be used in formulas. Below the Custom block, you find the Rio block. The test modules refer to this block by default. Thanks to the XRIO converter, the settings of the Relay Parameter section are automatically linked to the Rio functions. This configures the Rio functions with the correct settings and the user doesn't have to make any adjustments in this section. Even characteristics like, for example, the distance zones are automatically configured. Now that we have finished updating the settings in the test object, we can continue with the hardware configuration. The template was developed based on the hardware configuration shown in this picture. In this example, our hardware configuration doesn't match this configuration, so we have to make some adjustments. The template uses three different binary inputs for single-phase trip commands. In our example, we only have one three-phase general trip signal. There are two options to adapt this configuration. The first option is to connect the trip signal to the first binary input and to delete the terminals for the second and third input. 
We just have to make sure that the trigger conditions in the test modules are not affected by this change and that they still work. The second option is to work with the predefined configuration and to short circuit the binary inputs 1, 2, and 3 on the CMC. In this case, we connect the general trip signal to the nodal point. Finally, we have to change the option Potential Free. In our example, we will be connecting to wet contacts, so we clear this option and set the DC nominal range. The other settings are correct for our test. Now, let's have a look at the test modules. The test modules included in the test templates from the PTL can be used to test the most common protection functions of the relay. You are free to change the test sequence. For example, you can add or delete test modules, change the order, or remove links to XRIO inside the test modules. As you can see, the test modules that are required to test our distance protection relay have been activated based on the information in the test object's relay parameter section. Those modules that are not needed for our test are deactivated. Deactivated modules will not be tested or included in printed reports, but you can delete them if you prefer. In addition, the order of the test modules can be changed. For example, we can move the group non-directional backup overcurrent to an earlier position ahead of the group distance. It is also advisable to check if the predefined testing points in the test modules are appropriate. You can adapt, delete, or add new ones as needed. Also, it is possible to add other modules to complete our test plan. For this example, we will insert an auto reclosure test module to our template. As you can see, the distance zones are drawn according to our relay settings. We can make use of the parameters previously defined in the test object now and add our own links to configure the test. Now that our test sequence is configured, we can start the test. The test is now completed, so we can save the file with our preferred name and print the results if we want. After seeing a failed test, we will perform some troubleshooting tactics to determine why the test of the switch on to fault function failed. Please keep in mind to save and copy your Control Center document first to save the original test results. We open the State Sequencer test module to resolve the problem. The sequence simulates two manual close operations. In the first cycle, the fault occurs after 800 milliseconds. In the second one, after 1200 milliseconds. According to the relay settings, the switch on to fault function should be effective for one second after the manual closing. That means that the relay should trip instantaneously after the first fault and with a time delay after the second one. Our results show that it tripped instantaneously in both occasions. Before we do some further investigation on the problem, we copy the state sequencer test module. Then, we remove the link for the duration of the second pre-fault state and enter a higher value. As you can see from the results, the relay now tripped with the correct trip times.
we can conclude that the switch on to fault function seems to be active in the relay, but maybe the effective time is longer than one second. To check this, you should now compare the settings in the relay to those on the settings sheet. Any further actions or tests have to be defined on a case by case basis. Thank you for watching. Please check out the variety of PTL templates that are available to our customers using the Omicron Customer Portal.